Hey everybody, it's the Spencers and we're back. We're back. For the Strengthening Love and Sex podcast. I hope that you enjoyed our first episode. If you didn't get to hear it, they need to go back and get They that. really need to go back and listen to Especially it. Especially as people are trying to understand when is the right time to awaken love or reawaken love. Mm-hmm. And so we are back at it, uh, still in the Song of Songs. I think that book is so special for people who are in love, in relationship, and it's a piece of literature in the Bible that's often overlooked because people don't know what to do with it. Mm-mm, they don't have, don't know how to interpret it. Because God is talking about romance, He's talking about sex, eroticism. It is one of my favorite books. <laughs> yes, we know that. We know that. <laughs> so we're going to jump back in there again, and uh, we thank you for coming back in and tuning into this this podcast and for all our YouTube viewers thank you for being on and please share subscribe and share and like give us a review on the podcast and tell us how we're doing Uh, that's how those subscriptions begin to grow and the word gets out so tonight we're talking about how we strengthen love Mm -hmm. you know we talked about sex a little bit last week last week and I want to retract and go backwards and talk about the, the most important piece of a relationship is building that love foundation. Absolutely. Because if you don't have love, what? It's that house is going to fall down. The house, that, house of cards, right? The, the house of love, the house of marriage, all of the houses. You don't want it to be houses of cards because it's, it's delicate and fragile. But when you have a foundation built on love, it lasts. And so the scripture we want to look at tonight to just give us a springboard for our discussion is Song of Songs, chapter 2 verse 15 and what does it say babe it says catch all the foxes those little foxes before they ruin the vineyard of love for the grape vines are blooming mm, the grape vines are blooming blossoming we got to catch the little foxes that ruin the vineyard of love that's such a power packed piece of scripture because for me um, it's the little foxes that are most dangerous. Absolutely. We want to look out for the big dogs and the wolves and the bears and the lions, but it's the little bitty foxes. Yes. And, and the reason the writer talks about foxes is because they cause a lot of damage in agriculture. Uh-huh. They can go through your vineyard and wreak havoc on the vines. You're coming expecting a harvest and your grapes are all smushed and the vines are all destroyed because of these little foxes that get in. Now, how does that relate to love and our own relationships? What do you think this writer was talking about in terms of the little foxes? The little foxes, meaning that if we have a hole or something in our relationship, how those little foxes can make and maneuver their way in and tear up something that we've been cultivating, Mm -hmm. been working. So if you're thinking about a vineyard, then you have to do some cultivating of the land before those grapes come up. And so, but if you're not careful enough to build a fence around this vineyard per se, then other things can get in that will wreak havoc on it. Yeah, yeah. You know, in our own marriage, we have had to protect our vineyard exactly. from little foxes. The things that get in and try to eat away at the strength of our relationship, at the integrity of our relationship. And uh, I think as we study this this particular piece of scripture tonight, um, the lover in this story, I think she was probably speaking poetically about their relationship rather than about literal foxes Mm -hmm. and vineyards. And foxes were noted for their destructive tendencies in crops and fields. So her reference to these animals probably suggested metaphorically some problems in their relationship. And so what are some of those little foxes? Perhaps it's the fox of uncontrolled desire which drives a wedge of guilt between a couple. Uncontrolled desires. Can you talk about that? Uncontrolled desire. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just like that word. Uncontrolled. Now, we all have desires, but if you feed a desire that is not healthy between your spouse or your significant other that you're seriously dating, then uncontrolled, that can grow into a big hungry monster. So whatever you feed that is, whether it's good or bad, is going to grow. Yeah. And it's okay to have desires. Absolutely. We have to figure out in a marriage, how do we communicate what it is we want? And can we mutually agree upon acting on that desire? Not every desire is going to get acted Uh on. But the beautiful part of a marriage is that you can actually talk about 
what you want. Yes. What you desire, what what you like to do, you know, because uh, sometimes we get in this rut, we get we get into the same old routines of like, we're going to lay here with missionary, we're going to cut the light off, and you got your gown, your gown hitched up halfway, and it's just boring. And but then you have these desires, like when we were younger, we used to be more adventurous. We, you know... Uh, yeah, we go out in the car and go on dates and and make out, and now we come home and go straight to the the couch and pick up the newspaper or cut on the TV. And so people have desires, and and what I, we talked about last week in First Corinthians seven is is that the marriage bid is able to handle all of those desires. Correct. You know, the world is so messed up in this sexual disorder that we have to rediscover the beauty of love and love making. And the marriage bid is able to handle those desires. So how do you communicate those desires? Communication, definitely. The very foundation of a healthy relationship is establishing very early on that communication, Mm. that foundation. And you should be able to communicate what you want, what you like, what you don't like in your marriage. And so if there is a desire that, you want to explore with your husband, explore. Ex- then you need to communicate those because we don't walk around with the teleprompter on our head saying, Hey, I would like for you to do this. I need more of this. I need more of this type of attention without actually verbalizing it and communicating that to your partner. So let's give them, give them an example. Okay. Let's give so an example. Like the Imago dialogue. Mm-hmm. When we want to express a desire, so I'm going to let you go. Just share with me a desire that you have, something that maybe we haven't done or maybe we did do, but act like we've never done it and share with me. Okay, so let me think here. So, yeah. uh, Stacy. Yes, ma'am. I would like it very much if one day we can make love in the backseat of the truck. Hmm. <sighs> I understand that, you know, it's hard for you to share sometimes the things that you really want. So I appreciate, first of all, you taking the time to share that with me. I know it took a lot for you to share. So what I hear you saying is that sometimes you would like to make love in the backseat of our car. Is that what I heard you say? That's that's correct. All right. Is anything else you want to share about that? Not only just making love in the back seat of the car, but when it's daytime. Oh, Lord have mercy. When it's daytime, <laughs> when it's daytime, you would like to make love in the back seat of the car. Did I hear you correctly? You absolutely heard me correct. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay. So I'm going to think about that. Okay. And now, I'm not saying that we're going to be in a public place. We might just be in our garage. It's going to be hot. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the garage and the windows open. <laughs> so that was the Imago Dialogue. How we just, my wife was able to express the desire she had. I told her I appreciated her sharing. I made sure I heard her correctly. I asked her, did she want to add anything else? She added some more detail. And what we'll do is park and lot that thing, no pun intended, park and lot that <laughs> thing and come back. And maybe later I'll say, so you remember you told me about you wanted to... Um, practice this, you know, have this desire played out. Would you like to do it this weekend? You know, so just because a person shares doesn't mean it's going to happen. I'm glad you said that. Yes. So that is so true. Just because you're explaining or expressing a desire and you're using the Amalgo dialogue, it does not mean that it's going to take place. It just gives you a great avenue Mm -hmm. to express your needs and your wants in a very healthy way without there being any type of judgment at all. That's good. And then also I would say that there have to be some healthy boundaries for the desires. We all have things that come in our heads and hearts. And just because it comes in your head doesn't mean you have to share it. Uh, And then also, you know, you can't keep a bird from flying over your head, but you can keep it from making a nest. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Job said um, in Job chapter 30, I believe he's like, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a girl. And sexual fulfillment in a relate in a committed relationship is when you find sexual fulfillment in your spouse only. And for Job, he said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Job precluded Jesus when Jesus said, you've heard that you should not commit adultery. Mm-hmm. But I say unto you, he who looks lustfully at a woman 
has already committed adultery. So Jesus raises the standard of adultery. Why? Because he wants us to have some integrity in our relationships. You know, my wife tells me all the time, what, when I see somebody that looks attractive, what? The first look is for you. Uh huh. The second look is for the devil. Oh, Lord. So she, she the first look is like, we're human beings, right? Absolutely, yes. She might notice an attractive man, or I might notice an attractive woman. Hey, she's she's pretty, and she, I like that outfit. But if I'm breaking my neck, looking around two or three times, my wife is like, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are some other little foxes? It is the fox of mistrust and jealousy, hmm. perhaps, that might hmm. break the bond of love. Okay. What do you think about that? Mistrust and jealousy. Well, in order for there to be mistrust, there has to be some trust that was broken. Uh. So you can't have mistrust without some trust that was broken. Yeah. And unfortunately, that could lead to some very unhealthy conversations as far as okay, this trust was broken, so now you're trying to win back trust. And so that's, again, you have to constantly check in with one another, make sure that you're doing everything as a couple to strengthen your marriage and your love and your commitment for one another so that there is no room for any mistrust or anything to do with lack of trust. Yeah, you got to catch those little foxes. You know, when when you feel like, okay, this doesn't feel right. This conversation I'm having with this person that's not my spouse, it doesn't feel right. This social interaction that I'm having doesn't feel right. And if you catch that fox early, um, you can save a lot of damage from your relationship. I love uh, watching The Shy. We watched The Shy the other night. And uh, I forgot the guy's name that uh, works at uh, the restaurant and and he goes with Keisha. Emmett. Emmett, yes, thank you. So Emmett and his wife, they divorce. She moves in with somebody else and he's left and falls back in love with the, the first girlfriend he ever had and they move in together and the ex comes in and she's upset because her and the other girl were friends. Mm -hmm. And so the ex decides she's going to test Emmett because Emmett has had a promiscuity problem in the past and she comes over and tries to offer herself to him to test him and Emmett turns down her advancements because he says I'm a changed man I'm committed and the one thing she said was so now you're you're loyal to her but you couldn't be loyal to me um that trust factor has to be built up. Trust is the foundation of any relationship. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. And and when it's when a man breaks trust with a woman, is it possible to get it back? It is possible to get it back, but remember that it takes time because tr the unbroken relationship or atmosphere that happened for the mistrust didn't take place overnight. Mm -hmm. So there had to have been something that was building, 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 and then the break happened. Mm. And so in order to fix that tear or that break, not talking about using glue or tape or anything, it takes time. Yeah. You know, Jesus talked about showing the fruits of repentance. It's not enough to say, I'm sorry. Mm -mm. You know, I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I cheated on you. I'm sorry. Okay, you're sorry, but you're going to have to earn this back. Yes. And and some of the things we have to do as men is we have to check in. Uh, somebody somebody tweet, uh, put on TikTok the other day, they said, it's amazing that when you're in a relationship, you get to touch each other's private parts, but you can't touch each other's phones because it's private. Huh. Wow. <laughs> so when, when you're in an op a, a committed relationship where there's open and transparency, open communication, you should be able to look at each other's phone. Yes, absolutely. And for a time, you're going to have to do that, especially if you've broken trust. I might need to look and see who you've been talking to or vice versa so that I can have assurance that you're not talking about it. But in a healthy relationship, there is trust and there's no jealousy. Jealousy is that green-eyed monster that is breeded out of insecurity. Mm. How can people overcome jealousy in a relationship? Overcoming jealousy in a relationship is one, you, you got to check yourself. First, why are you being jealous mm. over if it's another person or if it's a relationship? 
and see, okay, is there something missing in the relationship that your significant other is showing to this other person or this other situation? And you become a little like, as, as we're saying, jealous of it. But you have to check to see why are you jealous about that situation? Is it a character default in you? Is it something that has happened before that your spouse doesn't know is a trigger and is triggering some jealousy and your spouse doesn't even know anything about it? Or is it something that you, you're just being too insecure because of past hurt or a past relationship? Yeah. You know, Anger kind of manifests as jealousy. When you when you agree, yes. And and sometimes I read in this book called Smart Love by um, Dr. Jan Stoop, Dr. David and Jan Stoop, that sometimes anger is a person fearing a loss of something. Uh, it's it's fearing a loss of something, and and with if you've been raised in a broken household and you missed a parent being there, a parent left the marriage. Some kids suffer from a fear of abandonment and it follows them into a relationship. Okay. And they can manifest as jealousy. You know, who are you talking to? Where are you going? What time are you coming back? But that can wear a marriage out. That's a fox that can kill a relationship, kill a marriage because nobody wants to be uh, in prison. Or control. Or control. Right. That's not healthy. At all. And so a healthy trust believes that your spouse or your significant other is going where they say they're going. And if they're running late, it's a good excuse as to why they're late. And you're going to, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, innocent until proven guilty. But again, when that trust is broken, it's got to be rebuilt. Let's talk about smart love real quick. How, okay. how important is it for couples to express healthy emotions or to express the emotions that they're feeling? How important is it in a relationship? It's, most important if you can't communicate what you need and desire in a relationship then what happened to the friendship when you first started or what you're feeling in that relationship yes so if you're angry or if you're sad or if you're depressed uh one of the things and you know i hate this you know in our own relationship when i say baby what's wrong and you say what Nothing. There's nothing. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Men, is anybody out there that hates that when your wife says? Well, it, 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 the reason <laughs> for that word of using that word is because at that particular time, there may not be anything that is wrong that needs to become that needs to come to your attention. Many times women will say nothing and we're trying to internally work it out ourselves because it may just be nothing. We don't want to inundate our spouses with so many fine details that they will lose the larger scope of what could potentially be something going on. I, but I also, as a man, I want to know uh, when something is wrong instead of waiting till you get historical. And that's another thing. Not hysterical. I know historical. But historical. What do I mean by historical? Historical meaning going all the way back and bringing stuff up and fit it into that situation when it doesn't apply. Mm -hmm. But again, if that foundation is already built there for communication or you're building toward new communication because communication needs to change as your as your relationship continues to evolve for the better, then there should be space enough mm. in the relationship to let the other person sit with themselves for a minute I like that. to regroup um, and then come back and say, hey, I know you asked me earlier mm. if something was going on and I told you nothing. This is what was going on and this is why I decided to use the word nothing. Can we agree that it would probably be more constructive if a person were asked what's wrong or is there anything going on they could say I'm still processing my feelings can I get back with you a little bit later oh that's that's a great way to do it <laughs> but nine out of ten couples probably in that moment can't find those words or if they do find those words the other person on the other end their face may be contorted in a way or start feeling a certain kind of way 
because they think that you may be hiding something yeah. when in actuality you're sitting with your feelings, you're processing it, and then you're going to say something so like Be honest. Be honest in the relationship. And that's what one of the things that came out in this book that I was reading called Smart Love. And it's, it's how to be emotionally healthy and present in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And SMART stands for self-awareness, okay. managing your emotions, accountability to yourself, your spouse, and others, reading the other person's emotions, and together in the land of emotions. So let's start with self-awareness. Okay. First of all, can we be honest about how we're feeling? Can we, about which fox is in the vineyard? Like, I'm mad right now, or... I'm sad right now or I'm depressed. And for men, it's really hard sometimes for us to articulate our emotions because we're supposed to be strong. We're not supposed to be sad, not supposed to be hurting, we're supposed to be OK. But as a man, real men are able to express their emotions and women the same way. One of the biggest strengths of any leader is being self-aware. Would you agree? I agree. And self-awareness is so important but again that person has you have to grow to it because you may not have the fortitude or the innate ability to be like okay I am feeling this way because and if you can't put the because behind it it will be hard for you to try to explain it to your spouse managing your emotions is important that's part of smart managing your emotions being able to like you said let me sit with my thoughts let me process what feeling it is i'm feeling let me make sure that i'm not being triggered into something that happened in the past in this present moment managing is important and then accountability to yourself your spouse and others do we a good strong relationship requires that we are accountable Right. We can count on each other mm -hmm. that we're going to do what we said we were going to do. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. And, and so how do we practically practice accountability in our relationship? All a man has is his word. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you have to, if you say it, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it shouldn't be like, oh, I, I, I've said X, Y, Z, uh, just something general. If, if I say that we're going to make love seven nights every night of a week, mm. then you should try to do that. Um, women and men? Women and men. Okay. I think you should try to strive toward it. And then if that's too lofty, then you come back and like, you know what, babe? I really wanted to try to, I know what I said and I really wanted to do this, but I'm tired. You know, I've been at work all day or the kids have been doing, you know, extra stuff around the house in addition to, you know, them going back to school. So you have to stick by your word. And that even means like if I'm saying I'm going to the store, then I have to be honest with that's why I'm going to the store. Now me, if I'm going to a store, it might be a couple of additional stores that I'm gonna stop Father, in as well. Help so, your children. <laughs> just check Look, my it. wife, y'all my wife will tell me she's going to the store and I know in my mind, because we've been married almost 30 years, I know that means that my, that's two additional stores. When she says one, she really means three. Maybe. And so I've grown to the point where I don't trip when she's gone longer than what she said. Uh, I just look on the find my friend app. <laughs> <laughs> that is the reason we have the app. And see that she's at another store. But anyway, accountability, reading the other person's emotions. You become a student of your spouse, of mm -hmm. your significant other. I can look at my wife's nose when her nostrils begin to flare. She's uh, feeling a certain kind of way and I have to check in. Uh, or if I get too quiet, she checks in with me uh, and we just we're students of each other. Let, let's stop there. Uh -huh. Checking in with one another yeah. is also so, so important. And that could be during the morning before you get up and you're still doing your pillow talk to check in with each other. Like, hey, what's your day looking like? Mm -hmm. um, praying with one another. If if your spouse is saying that they've got an important meeting uh, or session that particular day than just being present in that moment to check in with one another. That's so important.
Another little fox that you all may be dealing with in your relationship is the fox of selfishness and pride, which refuses to let one acknowledge his fault to another. Okay. And, and one of the biggest things we can do is own up to our stuff mm-hmm. in a relationship. Instead of casting blame and being defensive, just stop for a minute and and do a self analysis to see was I selfish in that moment? Am I being prideful in this moment? First Corinthians thirteen five says, "Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. Watch this. It is not self seeking, and it's not easily angered." So with all those definitions of love, we're talking about strengthening love. We have to look at what love is not Mm -hmm. in in order to understand what love is. And it's not selfish. You know what I mean? So, you know, Dr. Henry, uh, Dr. Peck, Scott Peck, he said that when you really love someone, you have to make room for that person in your heart. And in order to do that, you have to be selfless sometimes to think of the other more than you think of yourself. What do you think? Oh, I agree. We all have so much going on in our day. It's the busyness uh, of life. But we have to carve out a significant amount of time for one another. Mm -hmm. We don't want our spouses to be on that to-do list that we've put everything on for work, for school, for children, for all the groups that we're involved in. So we have to make sure we carve out that time daily whether that's in the morning when we're checking in in the afternoon when you're checking in if you're able to grab lunch a couple times a week or once a week you have to make sure that you're making time for your spouse and it's important in a disagreement or an offense to stop and look at what your role is we're so quick to look at the other person you know they got a speck in their eye and you got a log in yours. You know, Jesus said, how can you get this? You get the log beam out of your eye before you get the speck out of your, your friend's eye. And that's how it is in marriage. Sometimes we're so quick to see what the other person has done, but what did I do? And as men, I've learned Mm -hmm. that sometimes when you win an argument, you really lose, you know, We try to see who's most logical. My logic is superior. So explain that. When you win an argument, you actually lose. Because you're battling trying to see who's going to be right. Okay. And sometimes forgiveness is conceding the right for justice. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, sometimes in standing up for what's right, what is logical, I ruin the relationship. Whereas if I just said, you know what, I'm going to concede on this one. You're right. I'm sorry. I should have, you know, we, okay, I will use an example. Be transparent. We love watching TV shows together. That's what we do. We got our certain shows like Mm -hmm. The Shy. Yes. uh, And some other shows that we like watching. And the other day my wife asked me, she said, "I I noticed on the DVR that you already watched the episode without me. And I was like, yeah, you know, you were watching Mary Poppins or something, and I didn't want to watch that. <laughs> and so I went to the other room, and I watched our show. And she got a little mad. Her nostrils began to flare out. And I said, oh, <laughs> she's mad, man. She mad. I said, babe, I was just watching the show. We can... mm. And she, <laughs> she got... <laughs> you was hot. And tell them what I said. You tell them what you said. No, you tell them the story. No, you tell them. I told them it wasn't about watching the show it was the principle mm. of you thought it was okay mm-hmm. although it was very in, it's very insignificant that you thought it was okay to watch the show without me <laughs> y'all hear she's still mad I'm she's not still mad, mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad I can watch all that, not mad that's a real thing it's a real thing couples do that they watch TV shows they got the TV shows that they watch together and I and I came back and I said baby you're right I should have waited on you it will not happen again I apologize. And inside of my head, I was like, this is a book. Why is she mad? Really? On TV show. But the other side, the empathetic side of me said she wanted to spend time with her husband. This is our thing, not my thing. And so I had to 
check myself okay. and say, you know, that's wrong and to have empathy for how you felt. So I apologize again, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's important to be understood as opposed to saying that's silly. You know, it's just a TV show and that further exasperates the other person, whether it's a TV show or it's. What was another example? Anything else that you're supposed to be doing as a couple that's outside that you're spending time together. Yeah. It's, it's the principle of making sure that you have those connectivity points throughout the week, whether it's something as trivial as television, cooking together, cleaning up together, whatever it is that you guys decide as a couple. Destroying these little foxes in the vineyard requires us to be emotionally connected. Absolutely. We have to have great communication. We have to have transparency, honesty. We have to be selfless. Uh, we have to have some accountability. But there's some other things that we need to do that requires us uh, to get rid of these foxes. And what are they? One, you have to be emotionally available for each other. Mm. Yes, there's so much going on in the world. So much that's bad. Uh, that we just kind of get consumed with. And then there are things that are, you know, going well in the world, but we still need to be emotionally present for, for each other. And you have to, we also have to be uh, emotionally responsive to each other. Meaning that if I've done something that has offended my husband have, have offended you, then I need to be responsive on what you're feeling mm. and not interject my feelings and in getting historical on you because of how you're feeling at that present and not moment. diminishing what the Correct. person is feeling. Correct, exactly. It also requires us to being increasingly able not only to accept the emotions of your spouse, but to identify with them. That's where empathy comes mm -hmm. in. To put yourselves in their shoes exactly. to see how would I feel if that was me? And many times we don't do that because we're so quick to prove our point. But you have to be present in how that person feels to have empathy, to put yourself in their shoes. Uh, it, it may be an unforgiving spirit, which will not accept the apology of another that is a fox that's mm -hmm. staring up your venue. Have y'all ever got to the place where you were so mad, so upset that you're like, nah, I'm not forgiving them. You know, you you holding on to that thing, and it's like I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna get back at them, and that it just exacerbates it. It perpetuates the conflict because that's not a spiritual way to resolve an offense. And and it unforgiveness rewires your brain if you just keep unforgiving. Mm. Uh, it it re. re wires it in a negative aspect mm. because it's teaching you a new character trait mm. uh, and that character trait is not a good character trait because un unforgiveness leads to so many things oh, uh, medically uh, physically spiritually and there are times when you have to forgive to live mm. because if you're if you're harboring unforgiveness then that unforgiveness just continues to manifest into something bigger where there's this big molehill that you're tripping over every time. And every time you trip over it, you're like, oh, damn it. You know, here it is again. I thought we were past it. But you have to forgive in order to live. There's some questions starting to pop up. Okay. And uh, one young lady wants to know, um, how do you forgive when somebody has hurt you more than once doing the same thing? Hmm. How do you forgive when someone has done the same thing more than, mo once. More than once? There may be something that's going on with the other person. So it warrants that conversation on, Hey, this as opposed to wagging the finger, you did this, you did this, you did this, really having that excavating conversation mm. on why is this continual? Mm. Because it's not a mistake when you do it again. Mm. 
it, it, it's done purposely. Mm. So if you're com- completing, you're continuously doing the same thing over and over. What's that definition? That uh, and expecting different results. Insanity. That's insanity. So you have to make sure that that conversation is had. And sometimes that's multiple times the conversation is had. When there's destructive patterns in a yes. relationship. You have to pay attention to the pattern mm-hmm. and you have to address it. Absolutely. As you said, some excavating. Why is this happening over and over again? Because I'm not going to stick around if this is a perpetual thing that you're going to keep doing to keep injuring me. Mm-hmm. I'm not sticking around for that. But if a person is transparent and honest to say, I have an issue. I have a shopping issue. I keep buying packages and sneak them in the house um, and not telling you because I just I feel better when I buy stuff and I recognize there's something wrong when I have to keep it a secret. Mm-hmm. If you have a, a friend that is not a friend of your spouse and your spouse doesn't know about their friend, that's a problem. So you have to continue, like you said, to excavate to see why is this happening. And then I would say this, too, that when there's another offense different from a different from the one that they did before you might have to forgive again uh sometimes even after they've done something and you forgave them and they don't repeat the process but you still mad yes you got to forgive again you know jesus was asked by one of his disciples how many times do i have to forgive do i have to forgive seven times mm-hmm. and jesus said no 70 70. times 7 and so forgiveness is not for that other person. Forgiveness is for you. Yes. Uh, Ephesians 4.26 is helpful when it says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. When we practice unforgiveness, we leave the door open for the devil to come in and tear up our marriage, tear up our relationship. Bitterness takes root. And when there's a fence that has not been reconciled, it causes the heart to grow cold, causes love to grow cold. And so if y'all don't want your love to grow cold, you got to shut the door and keep the devil outside. How do you do that? Forgiveness. Baby, is that right? Forgiveness. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't let the sun go down. We got this rule that we don't allow 24 hours to go by without addressing the emotion without trying to seek some resolution because it just makes things worse. So do not go to bed mad. You said there's some physical things that can happen within your body. Mm-hmm. Ulcers, high blood pressure, migraines, migraines, cancer. It just manifests into everything. You got to forgive. These foxes have been ruining vineyards for years and the end of their work is not in sight. Even in ideal courtships and marriages, most couples encounter some potentially destructive problems. So I hope that tonight that this has helped. Is there any other questions that that's popped up while we've been talking? Let's see here. Somebody else wants to know, uh, how do you deal with the foxes of people getting in your business? Good question. <laughs> wow, yes. You have to make sure that the challenges you have in your relationship are not aired to the public, to your family, to your friends. Because watch this. You may have forgiven your spouse. Yes, but the friend or the family, if you've forgiven that person, when they come around, they're still... Sucking their teeth. Got their mouth twisted. Looking sideways. Right. And you and you guys have moved on <laughs> and resolved things. Do not air your dirty laundry. Mm-mm. Facebook is not the place... To fix your relationship. Nope. It's not the place to air your frustrations over your spouse. No, don't do that. You you got to resolve that thing in private, especially if you have kid children. Mm. Don't argue in front of your children. Don't argue in front of your friends. Fix that stuff in the back room. And when y'all come out, you come out on one accord. Uh, here's here's a question. My husband doesn't he isn't a good communicator. How can I get him to communicate more? Yeah, so you have to express to your husband that you want more detail. Okay. I had to grow in that area. My wife was like, when I come home, men have less words than women have. And throughout the course of the day, we exhaust our word bank. Okay. And when we get home, the wife asks, how was your day? You look good. It was good. It was fine. Good. 
Because we had a word. So that's equivalent to the nothing. Yeah, is it? It's, it very much is. Okay. It is equivalent so, to so, so what I've had to discover, ladies and gentlemen, is that I have to reserve some words reserve? for my wife because she, her favorite comment to me is, you've been talking to the world. You've been texting and Twittering and smittering and talking to everybody, <laughs> and you ain't got nothing left for me. And I'm is like, that how I say it? Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, and, and so I have to make sure that I reserve some words for Rhonda Faye so when I get home, I can be more descriptive about some of the events that have happened. And I also have to have some capacity to listen to how her day went. So communication is very important and and we don't need to hear what's wrong with you. None. And we don't need to hear. How was your day? It was good. It was good. (laughs) But to answer this question, there are multiple ways of communicating outside of just sitting in front of one another and communicating. I like to tell couples that, hey, if your spouse is a writer, then how about that person writing you or sending you a a text message on, you know, what's going on or you communicating. Now, this text message isn't anything that you're going to post, of course, but you're just expressing to one another how you feel or what's going on. If that is an easier way, another thing, another way to communicate is by having, there's so many games out there that you can order that gives topics on conversations. Mm. So like they're called conversation starters. So you can do something like that so that your spouse will get more in the habit of communicating the way that you need him or her to communicate. I like that. What is the purpose of us telling you about these little foxes? It's because we want you to have the best love making, yes. best sex you've had in your life. And uh, here's my vision for you and your spouse. Psalm 128 verse 3, it says, Your wife will be like a spreading vine on the walls of your home, flourishing within your home. Your children will be like vigorous young olive trees as they sit around your table. When it is that you protect your vineyard of love from the foxes, it gives your wife the chance to spread her vines. Let, let, let me press that a little bit more. Press it. She opens up more. Yes. She's more erotically secure because she trusts you. If she can trust you, she's going to open up to mm-hmm. you. She's going to try some things that you've been wishing she would try if she knows that she can trust you and you're not going to spill your seed out in the street. She will open up more and share from her heart. Your husband will open up more when you're consistent in protecting that vine from business and from holding grudges. Mm-hmm. And love making is one of the best ways to reconcile. When you when you've had those moments where the foxes got in and messed up some stuff, one of the best ways to come back together is through sex. It is through connection. But what I'm telling you is, is when you're intentional about protecting that vineyard, oh, my God, the fruit is worth it. I I talked last week about is is the juice worth the squeeze? Oh, my God. You're going to get some good juice. You're going to get some good wine when you protect your vineyard. Anything else you want to say? No, just in protecting that vineyard, it goes both ways that you and your spouse, your significant other, you need to find common ground. Yeah. um, Start there as far as the friendship. Keep building on your relationship. Have fun. um, Just just have fun together Mm -hmm. uh, as a couple, because the times that we will laugh over some of the silliest things, (laughs) I mean, big belly laugh um, that brings us closer together because we kind of have like the same personality as far as laughter goes. Listen, y'all, I hope that this segment has helped you in terms of dealing with the little foxes that that try to destroy the vine. And we want to remind you of a couple of things. Um, We have a master class coming up on September the 15th at 7 p.m. It's called Strengthening Love and Sex. And so, do you want the best sex you've ever had? Do you believe that there is another level or dimension in your love life that you've yet tapped into? I don't care how long you've been married. Mm -hmm. You could be in your 50s or 60s and still not have tapped into the full depths of erotic nature and passion. There's so much more to discover. So on the 15th, 
what can they expect? On the 15th, we're going to be talking about how to increase that communication to take it to the next level, of course. One, if your foundation has some kind of crack in it, we're going to talk about how to repair those cracks in the cement uh, for your foundation. Yes, of course, we're going to talk about that exclamation mark on the end of it, which is that sex, which is um, going to be even better once you're able to strengthen all the parts of your relationship it makes the sex the love making the intimacy so much better than what it was before yeah we're gonna, we're gonna help you um, get to that secret garden so she can open up her garden and let you in and come and taste her fruit and then also we got a retreat coming up uh, a tune-up, if you will, mm -hmm. in the mountains of Gatlinburg, uh, November the 1st. Uh, we're taking it, we're called Taking Your Marriage to the Next Level. Okay. We're going to take it higher by going up in the oh, mountains. Yeah. We're going to be in a beautiful uh, chalet. We're going to take up a charter bus uh, of, of married couples from Memphis, Tennessee. But you can meet us regardless of where you are uh, in the United States or even abroad. If you want to fly in and be a part of this retreat, it's going to be amazing. Like I said, it, during the time of year, that time of year is so beautiful. Oh, it's in so gorgeous there. The leaves are changing, yes. different colors, and you can look outside the window and see bears and cubs. And uh, don't it's just eat the bear. Very romantic. I mean, some of the rooms I think got some jacuzzi tubs in them too. You might be able to, you know what I'm saying? Or go out in the parking lot in the back seat of the car. That's what we said we were gonna do. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. We thank you guys for being with us. Listen, if this has been a blessing, if it's helped you in your marriage or relationship, would you do me a favor? Write. A description right there in the comments about how this episode helped you. Uh, subscribe, share it with all of your friends, copy and paste it. Text people, say, Girl, you got to hear this. Uh, 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 Miss Spencer and Mrs. Spencer are they're, they're breaking it down and they're strengthening love and sex podcast. So please share with everybody you can. Please share. Please share. All right. We enjoyed you guys and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Strengthening love and sex.